Okay, good morning all. Welcome to the Tourism Committee meeting for October 30th. I need a resolution, I'm not a resolution, a motion to uh, approve the minutes. Second, Ms. Angelo, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. We'll start with Kate with the resolutions. Okay, we have one resolution this morning. Good morning. Um, it's the printing contract for the Whitewater Rafting and Adventure Guide. You all have a copy of the 2014 issue in front of you. We went out to bid. Uh, proposals came in, and the lowest to print 45,000 of the 2015 brochure was Kenyon Press in Sherburn, New York. So um, this is a great piece. The, our local rafting guides have met with staff in the tourism department to um, produce some of the content. Peter met with them last year. They made some changes, so it's, it's a um, an excellent piece for the consumer, and it has a lot of good information in it, so I'd like to proceed with the contract to print. Um, Ms. Frazier? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passed. All right, this morning, Tanya and Peter and I are going to update the committee on an array of recent uh, and upcoming projects. Tanya is going to talk about her very recent and successful destination of New York State SAM tour. And Peter has a lot to review with the committee as far as electronic communications, new photography, and projects he's working on. Um, and recent, the activity in the department just continues. It really doesn't slow down very much <laughs> after the summer. We're still going quite strong. I mean, a little bit slower right now as we trans transfer from fall into winter. But the inquiries continue to be strong, coming from a variety of programs, print, online, broadcast, electronic, and referral. And the leads generated and tabulated as far as yesterday placed us ahead of inquiries as compared to the end of October last year. The production of 2015 collateral, ad placements, and planning for future programs has not slowed down. We're now planning winter and beyond. I gave you all a handout of some comparing some data from Smith Travel. Activity of 2014 holiday weekends of Labor Day and Columbus Day and several of our key fall events, Garage Sale, Balloon Fest, and the Car Show. Um, we're comparing here occupancy and average daily rates. So as you look at it, Labor Day weekend 2014 was above um, 2013. Average occupancy this year was 86.7, and the average roommate rate was $195 compared to last year, so where there was an increase. And you can see Adirondack Nationals, um, the room rate was up and the occupancy just the slightest bit down. Um, balloon Fest, the same. Um, garage sales showed a little bit decrease from last year in both average daily room rate and occupancy. And uh, Columbus Weekend, the occupancy was up with an average room rate of $99. What was the... Um Average room rate uh, compared to last year. Of which event? Um, weekend. It's, we get these weekly, so I mean, annually. Americans. I have the sheet downstairs for Americans. Okay. It's brought uh, fall up. Adirondack National Car Show. The average room rate for the car show was 156.78. Um, I believe it was less than that for Americans. And I do have it, it downstairs. 156.70 last year? This year? This year? In last, last year, $150.47. And that's about 3%. <coughs> if you'd like to look at Americade, I have a sheet no, just okay. like this. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, what, Jeff Hillary from uh, Lake George Channel, what, what, what sample, how many hotels are in We have 20 that contribute to this, so it doesn't represent our lodging climate completely. They're mainly flagship hotels. It's a good barometer. All right, moving along. Um, our 2015 travel guide, um, picture of the cover, it's going to be delivered on Monday, is on the screen. Um, we're on schedule, and it's coming on Monday, and, and then 10 drop ship locations November 3rd. But next month we'll review it, and go, Peter can go through the design and 
talk about the cover, et cetera, but that is on its way. We've depleted our 2014 supply really as of like yesterday and today, <coughs> and um, we're happy for that shipment to be arriving. Winter print and electronic ads have been placed and or reserved. For the most part on the screen are some samples of some banners and print. Uh, media reserved includes four regional AAA publications, Adirondack Life, Four Mountain Getaway Guide, Guest Quest Print and Digital Campaign, Nat Geo Traveler, StarLedger.com, and the, uh, New Jersey.com, and the Star Ledger, as well as Adirondack Regional Winter E Blast and two focused digital campaigns. Um, 2014 Winter Events and Activities brochure is out. You've all gotten copies, as well as the events, uh, Winter Events placemat. Both were designed by Peter with the content from Ellen in our office. Um, they'll be in distribution shortly, actually. We transfer over into winter next week, and leads are starting to come in, so we'll respond with the new guide and the winter events piece, um, which is good. We're, we're always ahead. We're ready for the snow expo, and also people that are early winter vacation planners. Both pieces cover November through March. Okay, that cover, <coughs> where, was, where was that uh, of the lake? Where was that taken from? This one? Uh, no, the, um, the one of the lake. Oh, Park. it's... Um, on the, e on the east side looking west, like a at Buck Mountain area, and Jonathan Esper, okay, photographer. Pilot Knob or Buck Mountain? Peter, do you remember which? And okay. Um, it's looking west. Correct. Mm -hmm. This one on the winter, though, is in your neighborhood, off of the big speed looking. I see that. Um, additionally, out-of-home advertising will soon commence and 20 inbound train station stops. Uh, there's a map of the New Jersey Transit on the left, as well as uh, the design of our, our um, platform poster. As I mentioned, we'll be in 20 locations, um, including Penn Station, actually, once they arrive with our commuters at their rail stop. Um, the the images selected represent people participating in outdoor winter recreation and the logos of our ski areas and the Saratoga and North Creek Railway. There's also a QR code for commuters to scan and when they scan they will see all countywide winter activities. The messaging of the short drive time to our area is important. New Jersey is one of our best markets and they know us and the three hours away is just really um, resonating. Just a quick tidbit, um, the size of this, if you, as you go down the stairs, <coughs> the tourism office, there's, um, we have their bulletin boards, 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 banners. There's a winter one from last year. That is this exact project from a year ago. Every time, I think, what, at the end of the season, if they have any in good standing, we'll send them back. But that'll give you an idea of how big how the poster is. On the they're, on, they're on vinyl. They're very sturdy and uh, quite impress impressive. And that image on the top is the new uh, one for our department. It's a Carl Heilman image. And I believe that's at the um, uh, Berry track, isn't it? Yeah. What's the other one, Ron? You think that's Berry Pond? No, the one up by you and Cat and Thomas. Cat and Thomas, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. Before the little um, Yeah, that's lean Dome two. Island. Yes. Yeah, that would be Dome Island. That would be Tongue Mountain on the left. I think Correct. that would be... Thomas. So that's a new one that we love. Rounding out the winter messaging will be television commercials airing in our primary markets. Peter will be in production next week on, on those commercials, and we'll show them the next time we meet. Our final newsletter for the year is scheduled to distribute November 20th. Everyone should be receiving that electronically. Um, public relations report you have for two different months in your handout, September and October prepared by Joanne. Um, the visual is some of the um, highlights of various media. We've been fortunate enough to have placements in, um, which is sometimes things you could never afford to buy. Good PR that's published really is, is quite beneficial. Um, Joanne works in unison with our Adirondack Regional Public Relations firm as well as that of I Love New York, uh, including leads that come to us directly. And, um, so yeah, those two handouts, and then most recently we did see a, the Postar did a travel guide for fall, and Ellen, who maintains all of the events throughout the county year-round and does an impressive job, was re we received credit. 
of our website and a lot of other regional and local publications use our website and all of the event information we have to to use for their own uses so it's um, always nice to get credit and then also you have a Bolton Landing Visitor's Guide that um, while I met with my AAA salesperson late summer she was I met her in Bolton Landing she told me about this page on AAA.com that was posting uh, visitor guides and there was Lake Placid, Plattsburgh and Wilmington and I said, hey, we need something from our area. And she said, Bolton Landing. And within two days, this was put together and was online. And I did share it with Elaine the Chamber and Lori the Sagamore. So that was very, very good coverage for our area. Um, we were privileged to have I Love New York representation at three of our largest events this year. This is their pod, which they brought on the screen to the Balloon Festival. Um, the tourism department was alongside them at Balloon Fest and Garage Sale, and we were not next to each other at Americade, but both were exhibiting. These events were considered mature events by the state that functioned at a high level prior to I Love New York involvement. The state used these opportunities to spread knowledge about other New York State events, assets, and attractions. Our events were selected among 50 in the state. And what they did was encourage travel throughout the state by being present at various events this year. Our staff will be exhibiting at the Ski and Snowboard Expo on the concourse at Empire State Plaza November 7 to 9. 2015 matching funds application has been submitted, part one. Part two will arrive by November 14th with an estimate of our grant, and that's quite a lengthy application at that point. Um, the Division of Tourism expect, expects approximately $3.8 million to be awarded, and that's the same figure as last year, so I expect that our grant will be similar, and we were just under 80000 of which we match. Um, recent industry involvement for me has included my position on the Board of Directors of the New New York State Travel Industry Association, or NICEA as it's called. That's the recent merger of the New York State Travel and Vacation Association and the New York State Tourism Promotion Agency. Um, I served on the, the HR committee recently and we searched, interviewed, and, and selected a new president, Jill Delaney from Clifton Park, who was introduced at our first annual meeting um, October 24, 23 and 24, we were in Poughkeepsie, and um, I think it's going to be a great selection. We're really looking forward to her leadership. And that would be it for me. We'd like to move along. Any questions for Kate? All right, we'll move along. Next on the agenda is group tours. Tanya? Um, my um, report is pretty much recapping the uh, FAM tours okay. that we did in September. Um, I'm going to pass some things because there's a lot of content. Um, we, got, we got picked up quite a bit in the media, so there's some media coverage here. There's some tour operator comments. There's some supplier comments. Um, we did do a follow-up survey. Um, I didn't get a ton back, but there are so there's some feedback here that you guys can look at as I'm reading. And um, we took a ton of pictures, so Peter put together some collages. Um, I'll go through each day, and um, there's corresponding images on the screen. Um, as you know, it was a it was a three-day, two-night fam, um, and we had uh, ended up having 55 domestic and international tour operators that attended. So that was great attendance. Even our tour operators commented, "I can't, you know, I can't believe how many tour operators are on this fam. It's it's huge." Um, and uh, of course, as I said before, um, really the primary purpose of the fam was to introduce kind of off the beaten path um, experiences, new things that maybe tour operators weren't familiar with. Um, um, my thought is I don't think we could have really presented a more diversified um, uh, itinerary to the um, tour operators, which I believe was really the foundation for the success of the FAM. There was just so many different things that they could do, not only in Warren County, but also Saratoga County. So uh, up on the screen here is um, day one, which was um, basically North Creek, Pottersville, and Bolton Landing. You can see Greg Beckler um, in the middle. We really tried to utilize as much of the time as we could. If we had uh, some downtime on the bus, we had presenters like Greg come on and talk about natural stone bridge and caves, because of course we couldn't get everywhere uh, during the FAM, so we did try to utilize the time that we had by getting suppliers on the bus and uh, kind of you know, talking about uh, their offerings. Um, so uh, we started off at Oscar Smokehouse. I can't even say enough about how great the Quintels did. They brought two huge um, trays of goodies on the, on the bus, and he did a great presentation. 
Um, then we had Greg get on the bus on the way to uh, North Creek. We did have a, a buffet luncheon at Basil and Wick. Um, there we had over 20 um, North Country presenters um, talk about their businesses while they had lunch. Um, then we headed into North Creek where they, they got a chance to go on uh, a, the dome car um, and also they had a little presentation at the North Creek uh, Depot Museum. Then they also strolled Main Street, got to see uh, Lori's store in the Copperfield before we headed to P uh, Pottersville for um, uh, Railroads on Parade. And then we headed over to Bolton Landing where they um, had a little downtime and a nice presentation from uh, the Sagamore. Um, day two was, we started off, oh, yeah. Day two, yep. Yeah. Oh, that was the Sagamore on the left. And then they did um, Vapor Night Club down in Saratoga was the evening event for day one. Sorry. Day two, we started at Six Flags Great Escape Lodge where they had a little tour of some of the rooms and the, um, um, the water park. And then we did the destinations of uh, New York State tra uh, Trade Show. Thank you, Jean and Kate, for manning the booth while I attended to the tour operators. But it was a great venue. Um, all of the comments were uh, really positive about the, the venue and the amount of suppliers that they got to visit there. Um, we did spend some time in Saratoga that day. Um, and the evening event was at the Queensbury. They did a great dinner reception. It was, well, it was beautifully presented, Amy. Thank you for that. Um, and the Queensbury, at the Queensbury Hotel. Thank you. Yeah, she had some antique cars out front. Um, they did a really great job. Um, and then the evening um, event was at um, Spring Hollow uh, Farm Distillery. They had a great time there. I don't have an image of that. I wish I did, but it was a great night. People really enjoyed themselves there. Um, see. Day three was awesome in Luzerne. <coughs> we started off in the village. Uh, and I, it really couldn't have been a better end for <coughs> Sam tour. Gene Marino, you know, he was on the bus with us, and he was a great ambassador for the county in Lake Luzerne. We had Lu Louisa Sherman representing Explore History Tours, dressed in period attire. So she did a little history tour of uh, Lake George Village. Um, then we did a little uh, stop at Lake George Steamboat Company and Shoreline Cruises. And then the afternoon really focused on Lake Luzerne. We um, stopped at Painted Pony. Uh, we had some step-on guides uh, representing Eunice Rockwell portrayed by local guide Sue Wilder. Um, then we, we split the group in Luzerne and we did Adirondack Folk School, Francis Kinnear Museum of Local History and the Gailey Hill uh, School uh, House. Um, then we headed over to John Duncan's place at Sacandaga Outdoor Center. Um, and we ended the tour part portion of the day at um, St. Mary's Episcopal Church where we had Colonel Benjamin Butler uh, portrayed by uh, resident Walt Ulrich. Um, and then we had a fantastic Riverside Farewell Luncheon uh, presented by Andy Van Borgendine at the Upriver Cafe. Um, and then the Luzerne Chamber did a great little uh, uh, dessert ice cream social at the end. People were really relaxed. They could stroll Main Street. It was just a great, it was a great ending to the FAM tour. Um, as the group departed Main Street at the end of the FAM tour was announced, we received a long round of applause from the operators, which was a nice way to end a year-long collaboration on behalf of both counties, destinations at New York State and Alon Marketing Group. So it was, a, it was a, an excellent um, FAM tour, and I think when you read the um, surveys and some of the comments we got, um, definitely going to um, end up doing it next year. Um, let's see, I just want to make sure I got everything here. As far as successes, um, we already have, out of the four companies that came with their group leaders, all four have said that they are um, booking for 2015. So that was a great thing. They all enjoyed their itineraries. I mean, there may, may maybe add uh, maybe like a Lake George Steamboat cruise or shoreline cruises to their itineraries for 2015, but all four did say that they were going to come back in 2015 uh, with their group leaders. Um, I know that Doris Herwig of Hayfield Quality Tours has already um, gotten business from the, from the fam. Um, Sue Wilder also said that she has gotten, uh, has gotten leads uh, from the fam for her, uh, for her portrayal of Eunice Rockwell, so she's gotten some business from it. Uh, additional noteworthy uh, international successes include Viajes, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, Falabella of Bogota, Colombia. She'll be working with Gormown and Emily Stanton for her international clientele. 
Um, and then we have a large um, uh, tour operator out of San Francisco. Uh, he just reached out to me yesterday um, for introductions to contacts at Lake George Steamboat Company, Shoreline Cruises, Explore History Tours, and Sacanaga Outdoor Center. So they plan on making these four companies, all of who participated on the FAM, uh, a top priority for them. So that was a good success. Um, Planning has already begun for the 2015 FAM. Um, again, we will be hosting with Saratoga. Uh, discussions have included partnering with the International Division of uh, I Love New York in order to include an international receptive operator segment of attendees to the 2015 FAM. And new components of next year's FAM will include beginning the FAM on a Sunday uh, with a welcome cruise reception on the lake. The tour operators will then be offered a one full day an evening of touring in Warren County and one full day of touring in Saratoga County. Um, and then the FAM will actually end with the travel show instead of putting the travel show in the middle. Um, and I'd just like to thank all the Warren County businesses for their contributions to making the FAM the success that it was. I couldn't have done it without, uh, obviously, our partners. Um, and then I passed the group travel planner around. This just came out, uh, it was delivered this week. And as you can see, um, we utilized a lot of the images from the FAM on the cover, the back cover as well. Um, if you look inside, you can see it has a new design. Um, just a, we used to have a full page for each uh, uh, advertiser, but we did some uh, condensed listings, uh, which reduced the price for the advertisers and also will reduce the uh, shipping costs uh, when we mail these out. Um, so I think it looks great. Peter did a great job on that. Um, and the group loop went out, which is for November. Uh, we'll, go, we'll be going out this week, actually. And it had a lot of, you know, we did a Rachel Ray itinerary on this. We did have some comments from the fam. We uh, did our, we announced the, um, that the planner was coming out um, and talked a little bit about where I'm going to be in 2015 <coughs> as far as shows and things like that. So that'll go out this week. Any questions, Nathaniel? Yes. As an individual property owner, can we get access to the list of people who attended the festival? Oh, absolutely, yep. Um, I can send the well, lease yeah. out yep, in an Excel spreadsheet. Would that be okay? Fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Just a quick comment. You know, it was a fun couple of days. I enjoyed it. Tanya and her crew did a heck of a job. Outstanding. Really outstanding. A lot of work went into that. and. She was nervous for the three days, but it worked out well. It worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> the responses have been so positive. Okay. Uh, we'll start with create, uh, end with creative. Peter? Okay. Um, this is the conclusion um, of uh, the 10 part series, I guess. Remember a while back we had wanted to do the top 10 events uh, in Warren County, kind of give them a little bit of our presence on our site. So, uh, Jazz Weekend and Adirondack Balloon Festival. Um, a little bit more content from the Warrensburg garage sale um, to make that live. But these went pretty well. Um, these include the vi event video, a description of the event, uh, some testimonials from people that have actually been there and are endorsing the event. Um, that top half here is usually a picture rotation of you know, images from the event. So this is pretty neat. And we will be using these as a huge feature on our uh, revised website. Uh, sent out um, two blasts since we've last met uh, on 10-7, the Canadian Thanksgiving blast. This goes to just a segmented list of people from uh, the Canadian email. So out of our 130 some odd thousand, we, we are able to identify a um, little over 5,000. And shopping, as you've heard last time with our, our TV producer, is um, huge. And they love coming down here to the outlets. We target them specifically for a lot of shopping content. And this. Um, was their three-day weekend, and we, again, pushed shopping on them there. So it was sent to 5,000 and opened by um, about 800 people. Uh, this one went the next day, and this is to our entire list. So our entire list is 136,000, and uh, we received 10,000, you know, close to 11,000 opens from this. Um, this one featured shopping again, but also included getaway packages. Um, local grown and produced, things that you could find in this area, and some arts and culture type stuff. Uh, the shopping package, or the actually the getaway packages were a huge hit. Um, and again, we use these kind of indicators to set up programs in the future. So we know that shopping packages were big. Um, we'll log that in our memory and know that we got to push that even bigger 
uh, next year. Um, and then we're always collecting content, uh, images and video, the TV production as uh, building our image library. Uh, this is some GoPro footage that um, I was able to get uh, out and about on, the, on Lake George. And this is actually an underwater shot because this camera's pretty neat. Um, you can pull still great fun, but you take this little thing, it's encased in a nice little plastic enclosure, and you can go underwater. Now worry about damaging the camera, and it gives you some neat perspective shots. Um, you know, you can get people jumping in the water, water splashing the camera. There's actually water on the camera right here, and you know, it's, it gives a, a nice little effect. So we've been using that GoPro to build our video library and our image library. And um, you get out to events like the Balloon Festival, so in this particular event, like our videographer was on um, a three-week vacation uh, out of the country. So he was not available to us. So something like this, I can bring the GoPro and the still camera and um, you know, shoot some, some video of the events and uh, then set that down and, and take our camera and get some stills of the events. So um, we will use this type of content and definitely in our TV production. And um, again, the full skills, I think we'll be able to use this great in our travel guide. And then when our videographer uh, was available, we did a whole day shoot that featured um, the Fort William Henry uh, and Lookout Cafe. Uh, we got some shots from the docks of the lake. Uh, traveled north to Adirondack Extreme and got some horseback riding and lodging at Adirondack. And these are the ones that are, are pretty nice shots. These are uh, really high depth stuff. And um, you see something like this. We pulled right from his video camera. And we added another image gallery to our website. This one features winter. So if you go on there, you'll see photo gallery. You can click that. And uh, here's some thumbnails. I can't go through them right now. Um, but that features, you know, just things to do in the county throughout winter ice fishing snowmobiling, skiing at uh, Gore and West. And um, here's one of the big projects that we're working on right now. So we had a meeting with Shelly from Ad Workshop. She's kind of the, the Google stat person. She's uh, certified with Google and um, does seminars, things like that. So I attended a seminar, <coughs> learned quite a bit about uh, Google and how they're changing their algorithms and constantly, you know, um, they're, they're changing things to and you can stay on top of it so you achieve highest search engine results. So uh, you know you want to be at the top three, first page definitely when someone types Lake George area in Google. Uh, so she came down after that seminar uh, pro bono from Ad Workshop, and they're the company that does um, a lot of our um, Adirondack Regional yes. campaign. Yes. So she came down on a one-on-one -on -one interview with Kate and I, and sat down and really poured through specifics of our Google system. And one of the big things was uh, just showing us, um, you know, where people are coming from, where they're going, and uh, we're using this information, particularly what the users are finding important on our site. Um, and these are our top ten things right here. Uh, we're using that kind of information to uh, rework our new website that's currently in the process. So um, we really want to push it down. And these are things that we got a good handle on already, but it's nice to know that there's confirmation in here um, by the actual patterns of the users. Um, we were caught off guard by, you know, not caught off guard, but pleasantly surprised by how popular fireworks were. So, you know, these are things that we will, you know, make easier for the user to find right away because they, they get to our site and we want to push them to what they want to find right away. So, you know, our top things to do, thing, it, things to do is uh, number two, especially number one, home page of the county. Um, lodging and events and camping. So, uh, using this data, we will be breaking out our new website design. Um, we talked about this last time too. We're, we're converting it to be more mobile friendly, uh, take advantage of some new features, uh, we take, take these lot, this um, top three events here, <coughs> feature bar section, and we're actually enlarging that because it, these have been doing so well for us that we want to give them more space. Um, and so we'll be using these stats and, and working with LMC Media to uh, get an up and running nice new site with new features and things like that. Um, and then on our site, we've also been collecting videos from events throughout Warren County. Um, this has been ongoing for I think a year and a half now, two years. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our most recent ones was uh, John Carson and Lake George Village Oktoberfest. Um, so we'll be embedding that on our site. And this is the video he sent in 
Um, and once that's ready to go, he sent it for our review and then he has to upload it to use. Once he does his thing, um, we will put that on our event video page. And that has, um, if anybody submits an event video, drop a comment, we can plug them in here. And these, you can play them right on our site. If you like the content, you can actually click on the video and go to their website for more information. And uh, recently, Kate and I went to uh, Zern to meet with Tracy and John Duncan to discuss the Sock and Dog at Whitewater Park. And just to get a better understanding of what they're looking to do, uh, and how the project uh, will look and uh, work for this area. Uh, pretty neat experience. Uh, we use that also to grab some pictures of throughout the turn. Um, Any questions? Now we <coughs> there have been a couple of articles in uh, USA Today. One was for um, the top 10 or 15, however many places, the best places to be in the country on Memorial Day, which highlighted Lake George. There's another one on beaches, as I remember. Um, you might want to take a look at maybe incorporating that in, in the um, on the site if you haven't already. I haven't clicked on it. Yeah, but, we, uh, we do have those incorporated on the site. Again, those are neat things and huge endorsements that we're factoring into um, how we display them now. These are like um, they're like feature bars, but these are boxes that you can click up. So expand and say, um, this might be a nice neat press release that says so-and-so happening in this area. Um, click more for more information. But those are the type of things that we want to create even bigger splash on uh, the website now. Um, you get an endorsement of the top 10 destinations in the nation. Right. Um, that needs to be front and center on the website. We also have in the left nav um, recent articles where yes. everything gets published. Yep. So we do have them um, in two separate locations, but they need to be bigger and better. Those are things we're considering for a new Thank you. All right, any other questions? Thank you. Good job. Um, we'll move along. There's old business, nothing pending. And the, oh, sorry, yep. Christina is not here. Mr. Consuelo is getting old. I can't remember the committee. Um, amongst uh, Mr. Hillary and Mr. Clark, was, uh, I drew the short to replace Christina today. So bear with me. Uh, Christina could not make it because she is attending the Juvenile uh, Faith Day Conference. positive leads that she's going to be bringing back with her. Uh, she's also, when she returns, she'll be getting ready to go to the Teens Conference, which is another uh, event planning based uh, organization. <coughs> and uh, this is where I think we might have some great opportunity for our new festival space uh, for her to uh, go out there with that. She's got the, uh, the pre-opening brochures that she's taking out. So she's doing very well. She's down the road for the next couple of weeks. Uh, when she returns next week, uh, she will um, complete her month end. Um, the only other comment I, I, I would like to make on behalf of the, uh, the chamber is uh, to uh, personally thank uh, Supervisor Marino and Kenny for attending our annual dinner last week. Uh, it was held uh, at the Queensbury Hotel, so they're getting a lot of business from us, uh, from everybody here. And, uh, he did a great job, and uh, we're very fortunate to have Senator Little and Senator and, uh, uh, Gavin Landry, Executive Director for the New York State Division of Tourism, to speak. And it was well attended. Tourism on the top of our mind. Uh, it was good to have uh, you gentlemen represented, and uh, hope you enjoy it for the end of the year from now. Well, and, uh, I think Kevin Landry is from I Love New York, and um, I'll tell you what, it was impressive on some of the stuff that he's really moving forward with. And it sounds like I shouldn't say this on TV, but he's working with the governor really close and pushing a lot of stuff that would help the North Country. So. Very well. Speaking of Senator Little, uh, she and I have had an opportunity to meet with the uh, Department of Transportation uh, starting the Gateway Information Center on April 17. Uh, I remember going back uh, a few months ago, we showed you a few conceptual ideas of what we'd like to do with that area. We brought it to uh, the Senator's attention and some of the feedback they liked what they saw. So the Senator arranged for a meeting with the uh, DOT folks and um, we showed him what we thought could happen. 
happened there, and they liked it, but they also said we don't have any money. But the senator said we'll find it. Uh, and she made a very, uh, very observed uh, comment in that uh, she said just the bathrooms alone are such dire need. She probably maybe she might want to get uh, the governor and uh, his girlfriend and Miss Lee to come up so she can actually go in there. She said, then we'll get you a bathroom. So she's really. Uh, Questions, Pat? Okay. Uh, on the old business, we have none. And that's the last thing here um, under the new business. We have the RFP. We had two respondents. Um, but what, uh, discussing it with Kate, what we'd like to do, you all have the um, the contracts and, and, and the literature. And what we would ask this committee, because it's tough to sit here and read it and kind of go over it right now. I'd like to give you all until... Um, the 6th of November by noon to send Kate and I maybe an email or a phone call or something on what you what you feel about them, what's, what you like about them or dislike, or any other ideas that we might have to add to this. And then um, I'm going to ask Mr. Kenny and Kate and I, and we're going to sit down and look at them, and at the next meeting then we'll bring them back here and we can all discuss them. Uh, I think it's the easiest way because there's a lot of good information in both of them. Um, and we just have to, you know, I, I, I want you all to settle in with it for a week before we, we make any move. So we'd appreciate it if uh, you sent us an email, Kate and I, and then we can get together um, and, and then we'll bring back what all, all the ideas are and at I'll the next meeting. Go ahead, I'll send everyone an email with our email addresses to make it easier for you as a reminder. Okay. Is that all right with everybody to do that that way? I know, I'm sorry, you know, I know they came to hear about it, but there's a lot on it that I think is very important that we should uh, spend some time <coughs> and knowing it over. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody from the public have any questions? Okay. How about the, we'll get a motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Kenny, Ms. Frazier, we're adjourned. No, my time is very bad. <laughs>